In our previous video, we learned about two-way ANOVA, and the example we used was the Bureau Goggles data. In that study, we looked at the effect of pint, or the amount of alcohol, the effect of identified or self-identified gender, and the interaction effect of alcohol and gender on the perceived attractiveness of partners of participants' conversation partners. What I did not do was show you how to actually generate the analysis or the profile plots that we investigated in that. Uh, video. So what I'm doing here is I'm opening up the beer goggles data and these data are available on ELC. And we can see that we have attractiveness, the perceived attractiveness rating of the conversation partners in the first column and this is our quantitative response variable. We also have beer, or the amount of alcohol which is beer measured in the number of pints and gender. Now for 2A ANOVA we have to have a categorical explanatory variable and here we do have that. So even though this is a quantitative variable in terms of the number of pints, because we have made it a discrete variable, or a because we're measuring it just in these discrete or categorical groups of the zero pint group, the two pint group, and the four pint group, and especially because there are only three levels and, the, and they are equally spaced apart, we must treat this truly appropriately as a categorical explanatory variable and not quantitative. So really, when you have a, a completely randomized design, and even if the variable itself actually has an underlying quantitative feature, because we have grouped it into 0, 2, and 4, we've taken out the uncertainty of the measurement. Um, because we have the 0, 2, and 4 pint groups, when we've assigned that quantity into groups, it is now a categorical variable. And so to make sure that that is reflected correctly, we come over here onto the left hand side of jump where it tells us what the columns are, what our variables are. We want to make sure that beer uh, pints is in fact categorical and it has that red symbol next to it. If it is not uh, indicated to be a categorical variable, we right click on the column header for that variable and we go to column info and we make sure that the data type is still numeric but the modeling type is nominal. So when the modeling type is nominal we're saying that this is a categorical variable. Alright so now that our variables are all the correct types, so attractiveness is quantitative and the amount of beer and gender are both categorical, we can do our analysis. Because we have more than one, uh, more than one explanatory variable, we must use the analyze fit model dialog box like we did with multiple regression. Our response attractiveness goes in the Y box and our explanatory variables go in the construct model effects box. And we want to make sure that we add our interaction. And we're going to do that differently than we did with regression where we created our interaction term in the data set. We cannot multiply beer by gender because female and male are themselves categorical. So we can't do zero times female because female is not a number. So what we have to do is tell jump to create the interaction term itself. So what I have done is in my columns box here in my dialog, I've selected both beer and gender. So beer and gender are highlighted together. And then I come down next to construct model effects. I come down to the macros option and I say full factorial. And now in my model effects box, I have beer, gender, and the interaction of beer times gender. So whenever you see times, we know that that is an interaction because it is multiplying the two variables by each other. So let me show you how I did that again. So I highlight the two variables that I want to include as my explanatory variables. I come down to macros. I go to full factorial and that includes all, all possible effects related to those variables that I could possibly be interested in. So that includes the effect of beer, so that's my main effect of the amount of beer, the main effect of gender, and the interaction effect of beer and gender. Now I've specified all the uh, explanatory variables or all the factors or effects in my model. I've already specified my response attractiveness, so now all I have to do is hit run. We see I get a bunch of output that we don't usually interpret, so I'm going to collapse all that. I get my summary of fit, my analysis of variance, 
We don't care about the parameter estimates, but we do care about the effects tests. As we saw in the previous video, the results of the effects tests are the same as the results of the model. These three effects make up the overall model. So my model has three effects. My model is the main effect of beer and the main effect of gender and the interaction between beer and gender. So if this overall analysis of variance does not have strong evidence for the overall model, then I should not follow up and look at the individual effects tests. If I want to get my profile plots, those last three plots that we saw in the last video, I need to come and look at the information on the right hand side. So if I want a profile plot or a main effects plot or just an effects plot or a means plot, so if I want to just plot the means for the two, uh, for the three levels of beer when averaged over the two genders, I come to the red arrow menu for beer. So this will give me a profile plot for beer and it will show me how the mean response changes in my sample for each of the three beers or each of the three amounts of alcohol. So I click on my red arrow menu and I request the LS means plot. So remember a profile plot is the same thing as a means plot. So if I select a means plot, I will get my plot of interest. And this is the plot that we saw in the last video. So on average, so for all people who had zero pints of beer, regardless of whether they're male or female or averaging over gender, the average amount of uh, average perceived attractiveness was about 64 points. We see a slight increase when, of perceived attractiveness on average when they, people drink two pints of beer when averaging over gender. And we see a dramatic decrease in the perceived attractiveness when people drink four pints of beer. So this is a profile plot averaging over gender because we are only looking at the effect of beer. So all, four, th all two, both of the genders are averaged into each of these three points. We can get the same profile plot for gender. In this case, all three levels of beer are going to be averaged into the two genders. So we do the same thing. I go to my red arrow menu. I request the LS means plot here and I'm going to put this on the same scale because we had that warning in the last video of making sure we're comparing things correctly. So my minimum is going to be 40 and my maximum is going to be 75 so we have the same axes. And now we can see that this effect does not seem quite so pronounced. So on average for females the average perceived attractiveness for people that females talk to is about 60 but uh, the perceived attractiveness that males talk to is a little bit lower at about 56. And in fact, this least squares means table is telling us exactly what the means are that are being plotted. On average, the female participants talk to people who had a perceived attractiveness of about 60, and males talk to people with a perceived attractiveness of about 56. You might say, okay, well, where does the alcohol come into it? Well, this is for females regardless of the amount of alcohol. So females who drank zero, two, or four pints of alcohol are all averaged into this point. Males who drank zero, two, or four pints of alcohol, I should say beer, um, are all averaged into this point. So again, a main effect is averaging over all levels of the other factor. If we want to see it broken out across both factors, we have to look at the interaction plot, and that's where perhaps the most interesting information is. To get the interaction plot, we go to the red arrow menu for the interaction effect, and we request the LS means plot again. Now, there are two levels of female, or two levels of gender, excuse me, and three levels of beer, so there should be six total means plotted, three for female and three for male. The three for female are going to be the three levels of alcohol for each uh, for the females, and the three for male are going to be the three levels of alcohol for the male participants. When we say create an interaction plot, we're going to click this and we're going to choose a term for overlay and that's going to tell us what are we going to put on the ax uh, what are we going to put on the horizontal axis versus what are we going to make separate lines for? I'm going to make gender the overlay. So that means make separate lines for the genders. So here the red line with the circles are the female uh, participants and the blue line with the plus signs as the, as the points are the male participants. We have two separate lines because we have split out the effect of beer by each level of gender as opposed to looking at the effect of beer averaged over each level of gender. 
if we look at the least squares mean table, we can see that there is a average response for zero for female, but there's also an average response for zero for male. This first plot that we looked at on the far left, that is averaging those two groups together, both males and females together at zero pints. This plot on the right has broken apart the zero for male and the zero female apart. So now instead of having just three points for zero, two, and four pints, we have six points for zero, two, and four pints, each for males and females. And what we want to look at in an interaction plot is whether the effect, that is the change from one level to the next for beer, is the same for both genders. Here, it's basically the same when we go from zero to two pints for males and females. But when we go from two to four pints, there is only a small decrease in the average perceived attractiveness. The effect when we compare two pints to four pints for females is very different than the effect when we compare two pints to four pints for males. There is a very big change for males, on average, who drank two pints and four pints in the perceived attractiveness of the people they talk to. The perceived attractiveness for people that females talk to between two and four pints is not that different at all. Because the effect of alcohol or of beer on males and females is not the same, we say that we have an interaction. Remember the definition of an interaction is that there is a different effect of one variable on the response for different levels or at least one level of the other variable. In this case we have that. The effect of beer on perceived attractiveness differs for females than it does for males. Or we can say the effect of gender is different for the comparison between two and four pints when we compare males and females. And that is the very definition of an interaction. So I have walked through how to find, uh, to generate the output for a two-way ANOVA, as well as to generate the means or the profile plots uh, to help us get a visual representation of the three effects of interest in that result.